So I was in the shower, I was cleaning my ass and making all shirts all sparkly, spanky clean. I'm not the funny one, I'm the pretty one. Cock shots. <laughs> <laughs> I just checked myself out. Music, wine, and then loop up and get on top. The glory hole's like a, a like dick theater. I've imagined your pants. Which means your pants had better come off. Mama needs playtime. I think that's uh, uh, We're not sluts. We just love love. Hello, podcast land. This is Angela. Podcast land. Like, yeah. Is it like a land? Is it like one of the new Disney, like there's Land of Tomorrow, Adventure Land, and Podcast Land? Well, if there is, I really, really hope that you don't have to wait in line so fucking long for Podcast Land. It's a big world after all. <laughs> okay, actually, you probably shouldn't sing that. Now I'm going to get sued now. Well, I was going to say, actually, it, there are a lot of podcasts out there. And, and if your list is as long as mine as to things I need to catch up on and listen to, mm-hmm. yeah, that kind of makes sense that there would be a land like that. Yes. Yeah. Are you distracted by the <laughs> screensaver? <laughs> well, it's oh showing God. it's showing gay furry porn now. <laughs> it was like, I didn't realize there was gay furry porn. I thought it was only the... I thought it was just... Oh, my God. Just... Okay, so for people out there in podcast land, <laughs> uh, on our TV now, we have a screensaver yes. that is basically like... It's furry porn, but it's comic style. It's, yes. it's something that it's I don't know. It's comic book pages. Yeah. But imagine you took, like, all your gay furry porn that you have. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or if you don't have any, go out and buy some. Or furry porn. Um yeah. I'm sorry, yes, all your furry porn. And so most of this was straight stuff, which I thought it was a folder of straight stuff. Um, but it's clearly some gay stuff as well. Um, and it's just like, just they, you rip the pages out and you just throw them down. And it's, it's really distracting in an extremely hot way. I found myself just watching the screensaver for 15 minutes. <laughs> it's like, it's like I'm 1992 Bradford uh-huh. again and I, and I've got the flying toasters. I don't know if you ever had that. I was going to say, it, well, okay, maybe not 92. But I was going to say, it's better than the dictionary one where you're, like, learning words and definitions. Yes, yes. (laughs) Inebriated? (laughs) Like, I need the definition for that. Yeah, this is definitely much, much sexier screensaver. Oh, my God. It's just great. And I'm... I, I can't not look at it. That's the problem. I'm going to try to focus on the podcast tonight. Okay. Sorry. If you don't, we're going to turn the TV off. Damn it. <laughs> I'll be and good. then no sexy stuff for you. I'll be good. I'll be good. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So uh, coming up, uh, September 19th? 20th. 20th. Fuck, I don't know days. It's a Friday. Uh, it's a Friday. It's the Friday that's closest to September 19th. <laughs> <laughs> Which clearly is, must be the 20th. Uh-huh. Uh, that's our next Pendulum Party. It's Pendulum 13. Lucky. Lucky 13. Yeah. Uh, 12. I thought it was 12. Is it 13? Is it thir- Is it 12? Oh, oh, my goodness. I don't know. We need to check. But I'm We've probably sure. had a dozen or no, a baker's it's 12. dozen. It's 12. God damn it. Because last time it was XI. Oh, you're right. It was. X-I. And now it's XII. X-I-I. And next time it's XII. <laughs> <laughs> We really haven't been drinking that much. That's no. the funny thing. It's just it's been one of those weekends of of sex and screensavers. Yeah, that's basically it's all of our great. weekend. That's our it, weekend. It's been lovely. Um, so I'm not thinking too clearly, but yeah. So the next pendulum is September 20th, mm-hmm. uh, not the 19th. It's the 20th. Yeah, come out and see us. We yeah. It'll I'll, be I'll exciting. Get, yeah. I'll be having the uh, the our, for our Patreon supporters. The email will go out with your special ticket link probably Tuesday. I got to get on Lawrence to generate a ticket link mm-hmm. for me. Uh, so yes, be patient. I promise it's on its yeah. way. What else do we have going uh, on? The, the next big thing is what like seventy something days 69 away. Sixty nine days for us. Oh, it is sixty nine days yes, for us. Yes, it because, is. <laughs> uh, our good friends in the states, who I'm so excited to see again, they messaged us today and said, "Yeah, we have seventy days. You guys have sixty nine days till desire." Yeah, pretty stoked for that. We uh, look. I can't tell you anything. I really can't. But I can tell you that Angela tried on one of her costumes today, and it ended us with ended up with us having some massive sex. Um, yeah. 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 It's, it's it's one of my favorite costumes. There's basically two that I'm pretty excited for that are I think they're like I'm really putting more effort into or I care more about. Yeah. And that is definitely one of them. And it's also one in which the three of us, you and I and the gentleman, are all going to be in the same theme. It's going to be Because great. sometimes we are and sometimes we're not. Yeah. But this one is clearly But we... this one is clearly we're all doing the same thing and... 
I am so excited because I think it's pretty awesome. I hope everybody else thinks so too. I, I, it's it's. I'm not gonna say it's awesome. I'm just gonna say it's fucking hilarious. But we definitely go together like rama lama lama da ding da da ding da dong. <laughs> Easy for you to say. <laughs> Like she walked, she walked. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, really, but, we are... but I saw it and I was like, I must have you, and I must have you now. <laughs> Which honestly, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't feel like that's me very often. Like, mm. very rarely do, am I like, I'm not going to give you an option. Like, let's we're just having sex. Yeah. It's like it is consensual, uh, but yeah, it's still like yeah. I, I I'm, very suggested. Yes, yes, it's like <laughs> it's, it's heavily it's heavily suggested uh-huh. that we have sex right now. I can um, tell, though, that we're getting down to crunch time with Desire because we started thinking about the costumes ages ago, and we got the big things. So yes. we got all the major pieces that we needed to make it happen. And now we're getting down to the nitty-gritty, and we're getting down to the accessories, and do is this okay? Do we need a little something extra with it? What's going to make it pop? Yeah, and because we're only a few months out, and generally, if we have to order anything online, it's going to take a month to get here. So we do have to start thinking about things like that. And just try it. Yeah. And so we are just kind of like getting down to like, what are the details? Which is why I tried on my really awesome costume earlier today just to see, do I need anything else? And cute. the answer was no. It's very cute. Oh, my God. It's actually it's more than cute. It's <laughs> fucking hot. Anyway. Uh-huh. So, yes. There will be pictures. Oh, of yeah. Of course, there oh, will yeah. be pictures. Yeah. It's going to be mm-hmm. great. It's going to be great. That's just over two months away. I know. It's exciting. I am counting down the days to November. Yes. Counting down the days because the last two months of this year, uh, we, well, I am decidingly doing very little work. <laughs> I'm taking a lot of time off over those two months. Yeah. And I really need it to reset my, my brain because uh, my brain hurts. I was going to say, I'm really excited both for a holiday t- and then to go somewhere like Desire where you can be completely open, completely free, not have to really worry about filtering or anything like that. And also with the Life on the Swing Set crew, it's just such an accepting and such an amazing group of people. And we met some very wonderful folks last year, and I'm just really looking forward to seeing those people again and meeting a whole bunch of new people there. And I think all of that's kind of culminating at a time that like we really need that both kind of getaway and that reinvigoration. Yes. So I need yeah. invigoration. <laughs> reinvigoration. I need, I need reinvigoration, yeah. but I also need invigoration. <laughs> Can you invigorate me? Sit me down for a little while uh-huh. and then reinvigorate me. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then we've got a cruise coming up. So if you want to go on a cruise with us, it's, I mean, it's not a podcast cruise. It's just us going on a cruise, but you're welcome to come with us. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's going to be awesome. That's over Christmas. We're getting away from yeah. Sydney for Christmas. That's going to be great. Yeah. Uh, statistically, what are the odds that we hook up with somebody on the cruise ship? Um, very likely. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. So it's going to be good. I- I'm going to say probably better than very likely. Yes. <laughs> like almost assuredly. Yeah. I would say that. I- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do what I typically do on a cruise ship. And while we're in port, I'm going to be on Grinder, seeing who's available. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be great. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's our, mm-hmm. that's, that's throughout the end of the year. That's yeah. all that's coming up. Yeah. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, kind of saved a lot of stuff up for the end of the year, but totally yeah. worth it. Oh my God. So, I'm so excited. Yeah. <sighs> but first we must focus on the present mm-hmm. and, the time that is the present and or the present the, or the, that is time. Or the past, because that's what we're talking about, right? We're talking about things that have already happened. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> we're not talking about what we're doing right now because that would be really boring because we're... But arguably, I'm wait, guessing... That, wait, that's really meta because if we're talking about the present, then we're talking about what we're talking about, which is what we're talking about. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Oh, God. I just was going to try to convince you to give me a blowjob on, on air. <laughs> we're going to be talking about the present. And currently, you're going down on me. Uh, you're not, but working on it. I mean, I'm I could be. <laughs> <laughs> I was with a gentleman that one time. Mm. You were. Yeah. That's true. Uh-huh. Oh, my God. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm just I'm just glad we're not doing urban legends. Or, no, I'm sorry. Um 
What's that fucking Urban website? Dictionary. Urban Dictionary. Yes, Urban Legends is still on my list to plan and prepare because apparently we're supposed to do that. Yeah, yeah. So anybody out there, if you have any sex urban legends that you want us to talk about, I'm like I'm an urban legend aficionado. I love urban mm-hmm. legends. Uh, so if you've got your favorite urban legends, sexy urban legends, please send them to us. I'd love to read them to Angela and watch her face. <laughs> <laughs> this would be a backwards of Urban Dictionary. It would be yeah. because you you hate urban legends because you think people are stupid. <laughs> I don't hate them. I love to make fun of them. <laughs> oh my god, it's gonna be great. I just remembered something. It happens sometimes. My brain just kind of works. Mm-hmm. Uh, one more thing that we've got coming up. Uh, you said going down the rabbit hole. We are going back to the rabbit hole. Yes, we uh, are for their second rainbow party on October nineteenth in Adelaide. Mm-hmm. So we will be in Adelaide uh, live yes. and in person, and we will be back at the rabbit hole. So if you yeah. are in rabbit in the rabbit hole, if you are in Adelaide or the greater greater South Australia state, please come to um, yeah. Come to the rabbit hole on yeah, October 19th. It's going to be a... It's a Saturday. It's a quick down and back for us, but it'll be... I really look forward to That's it. That's why I thought so. Pendulum was the sa- sa- the 19th. Yeah. September 19th, but no. Yeah. Okay, so... Yeah, September 20th, October 19th, a month apart. Amazing. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. It's going to be great. Yeah. So, let's... What are we talking about? We're talking about things that we've done... Yeah. Things and people that we've done recently. Yes. Uh-huh. Um, where do you want to start, my I love? would like to start with the Sydney Fetish Ball. Okay, sure. So, I... Admittedly, don't really know the history of Sydney Fetish Ball, whatever. I don't know if there ever has been one. I'm going to assume. I think there has, because I think this was like a, a rebirth okay. of it. I was going to say, I would assume that at some point in time, Sydney had to have had something like this, right? Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Um, but in the time that we've been here, we have not heard of something like that happening. And so, yeah, this year there's a group, a couple of groups that got together and decided that they wanted to kind of reinvigorate the Fetish Ball and I mean, obviously, we had to go along because you know fetish you and have ball. To. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you you had me at both of those words. <laughs> I like balls. I like fetishes. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. therefore, we were there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we were there like ten minutes after the doors opened. We were early. I'm, but that's how we like to be yeah, because I'm, even at the swingers club or, or parties and things that we go to, we like to be there near the beginning because it's a nice chill time to come in first of all before things kind of ramp up and get really hectic and busy and and super energized. So you can kind of be there as that builds and as that happens. And at the same time, you can kind of see people as they come in. And I really like that, especially something like this yes. because everybody was well, dressed up. And they had a media wall. Yeah. And it, it's one of those things too where like we know amy who is one of the masterminds mm-hmm. behind it uh penny was there who has been on the podcast before yeah. miss penelope dreadful yes yeah. um and, and you know seeing seeing folks that we know and we like mm-hmm. and having that sort of time because it's not crazy busy yet yeah to chat with people and 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 whatnot and then we also had uh some very sexy friends show up that we thought were gonna be there and suddenly they were there and then we chatted with them forever mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and hung out yeah and there were there were a lot of other people that we knew from the lifestyle and from both i would say both the swinging side of the lifestyle and more of the the kink side of the lifestyle so we saw a lot of people there chatted with a lot of people kind of reconnected I'm going to say or met back up with some people that we may not have seen in a while yeah that was really lovely to kind of to talk and we danced a little and you know that kind of thing and just just have that time together and yeah it was it was fun to see all of the amazing outfits because everybody put effort into it yes and some people put like so much effort into their outfits. I know that there was one person in particular that I really liked who was up for best dressed and didn't win, I think a bit unfairly. Agreed. But yeah, they were just just amazing. Fucking amazing. Yeah. Do we want to talk about what we wore? We can. I had to think back to what did I wear. I, I don't <laughs> I don't remember what you wore. I do all I remember about me is what pants I wore uh-huh. because it was so difficult to get into them. Well let's talk about that. <laughs> Let's talk about your pants. <laughs> Let's talk about my pants. So I wore my pair of leather pants that I got in Copenhagen mm-hmm. that literally look like they were painted onto me. Uh, it's kind of amazing. They are the tightest pair of pants. Like, they're the type of pair of pants that you put on and, I, like, 
I'm going to be really stereotypical right now, and I don't mean to be, but we've all seen those movies where the women, it's always women, lay down to zip yes. their pants and button them. Mm-hmm. That's what I was doing. Mm-hmm. I was laying down to zip and button my pants. And then I had underwear on, and I was like, this is not working. This underwear, like, are digging. I, their because underwear you, need, is, you need that extra, like, one millimeter of space. Well, they were becoming <laughs> inner wear. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, I had to take the pants off again, then take the underwear off, and then uh-huh. go back on. So if you saw me at the fetish ball, I was not wearing underwear. I was one zip away from just popping Um, out all over your face. Actually, two zips because anyone who looked closely enough, there was a back zipper as well as a front zipper. You could have had your choice. And like, look, both were open for, uh, you know, with the people that we were hanging out with. Yes, the both were open for whatever you wanted. And so, yeah, it was... um, it was one of those – sorry, I just got an email from Breedwell. If you don't know who Breedwell is, you should definitely check them out. They make really great fetish wear. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Speaking of which. Spe- speaking <laughs> of fetish wear. I almost wore my Breedwell harness yeah. to this fetish ball. I wish, wish they would pay us. Anyway, so – Yes, so I, I had these pants on, and I had to lay down to get them on. Mm-hmm. And then they're leather, so once you get on, once you get them on, you walk like a cowboy for a little while mm-hmm. until they warm up, and then they are like a second skin, and you don't even notice you have them on. But they're really awesome because they have kind of different design and texturing in different places, and they do have kind of red piping trim. They're black with red piping trim. They look really awesome. Like they're, I, that's right, because I wore those and I wore yeah. my Army of Men harness. Yeah, that was the black with the, the red yeah, crossovers. Yeah. yeah, so that was mm. – oh, I looked – I mean, I looked good. And I don't say that very often. I was very proud of the way I looked. I yes. felt sexy. Yeah. Uh, it's very rare for me to feel – like I did. And I almost didn't wear that. I almost cheaped out and wore my typical leather pants, which are more like jeans. Uh, but you convinced me to wear these and I'm mm-hmm. really glad I did. Mm-hmm. Uh, because they look amazing and they are work to put on. But for me, God, it's like they? a steel bone corset in that you put it on and you have to let it warm up before it really gets comfortable. And, and you did, you had them on for a bit before we left the house. Yeah. So they kind of wore in and you were getting better with them. And because we were going to the ball, it's not like you were just going to wear them for an hour and then take them off right so they were going to be on for a while so it's worth the effort yeah you know yeah yeah, yeah. it was I, I was happy yeah i was very happy. oh i was very happy too um, i liked watching you and that was yeah so I don't even... so i went um similar color scheme to you yes but that's right i went with something that was because we hadn't been to something like this before and we weren't sure how out there to be or how far to go kind of thing. So I kind of went, I'm going to say a little more conservative. And I had on my red leather pencil skirt and uh, fishnets, uh, black fishnets and my red boots. And I had on my black and red kind of chain mail top. Yes. So, yeah. So yeah. it was just the one. That little, little, I went conservative. I just wore a chain mail. <laughs> I had my black and red chainmail top that ties in the back, and I did have some red sparkly pasties yeah. because I'm pretty sure nipples have to be covered. I think so. It's a public venue, whatever. Yeah, so I had the the chainmail top and the leather skirt, and I think that was really about yeah. it. But it was it was fun because I tried to kind of basically color match you, and at the same time, you know, be a little fetishy, but not. Again, we weren't sure how far to go. Yeah, And yeah. so, yeah, if they do it again next year, we kind of have a good idea. And it can be anything from that. Some We saw people there that were in, you know, nice clothes, like button-up shirt and pants and whatnot with a harness on. And then you see people that go completely all out. We saw, I would say, a pretty good spectrum of the fetish kink community. Agreed. Except there were not a lot of furries or like puppies and things like there that. There weren't, yeah. There, there was were, a horse. There was a horse. There was a pony play and then I saw a kitten. There, I saw a puppy. Okay, I didn't see a puppy. But there were not many yeah. there. So it's funny because Hellfire is usually very he- heavy on the puppies. Mm-hmm. Um I'm going to branch out and say there wasn't a lot from the gay community. And yeah. arguably, typically, in at least in Sydney, most of the pups are in the gay community. Yeah. I don't really understand that. Um, and I don't know if that was because of a conscious choice that those people didn't want to come or didn't want to take the chance or if it just wasn't marketed to them. Or maybe they there was another There could have been another event. Because yeah. it was a Friday night. And you know how Friday nights are. Yeah. There's something going on in every street corner in uh, Sydney. Yeah. So there could have been another event that people were at. But I will say that that was one population that I don't think was represented very well. Agreed. And it's one that I always look for. I love so. They're so cute and so sweet. And I just yeah. want to curl up and... Ugh. 
so yeah, it was it was a good night though. There was uh, yeah. a couple of fashion shows. There was a, a few. Like, there was a whole section of, of the venue that was um, rope play and suspension. It was run by Studio King. Yeah, yeah, there was some really great performances. I think there was a spanking bench in the Studio King area. As okay, well. yeah, I think so. That's mm-hmm. right. Yeah. There were some really great performances. Yeah, I was actually really impressed with the performances because like they, aerial performances. Yeah, and they basically had rolling performances, so it was like every what maybe half hour, forty five yeah. minutes, something like that, for a while that they had several different performances. So it was nice because it kept you entertained, and so you could go watch a performance. Then there was dancing, time to get a drink, time to take a break, whatever, and then you would come back for another show, and so it keeps you engaged and keeps you going throughout the night as opposed to, oh, look, we're going to put all of our performances in one block together. Right, and you know, what what that also leads to is this great thing that there's never really a wait at the bar Mm. because typically what happens is – You know, there's that long performance, and then everybody runs to the bar or the bathroom. And there wasn't really, like, there was always a line at the bar, but Mm -hmm. I think the longest we waited in line was maybe 10 minutes, maybe. And, you know, you're chatting with people the entire time, so it it goes by like like that. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't, I was really impressed. I was kind of bummed because we ended up leaving at midnight because we had an early flight the next morning. Yeah, it was, I think, 12, 1230 when we left. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of a shame because I would have liked to have stayed and seen all all of the show. I think there was only one performance left. Yeah, that we but it was a fire performer, and we missed that. Yes. Uh, so kind of a bummer for that, but you know. Yeah. Next time we had a, like I said, we had an early flight the next morning. I'm very glad that we made it, uh, mm-hmm. and we would highly recommend if you're yeah. in Sydney and the fetish ball comes up again just to go check it out because. A lot of fun. Yeah, it was definitely a lot of fun. And and we'll definitely go back if they do it again next year, which hopefully it happens again. I don't see why it wouldn't. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was... I actually think they're going to try to do it at multi oh. more than once a year. I oh, think okay. Amy... And- I, and maybe I've just misunderstood what she was saying, but I thought that she was saying she'd like to do it twice a year. Well, that would be awesome. I am in full yeah. support of that. Because uh, cool. I, I really like Hellfire. But Hellfire is a different feel. Hellfire is, is more nightclub. This was a lot more performance event kind of thing. I would say that it was more performance and a bit interactive because, and I think a lot of it comes because you do have the performances. And so there was dance music and that nightclub feel kind of in between. But at the same time, maybe it was because it was spaced out with the performances. I'm not really sure why, but at the same time, it felt like there was more of an I was more able to talk to people and interact with people yeah. as opposed to just get out on the dance floor and unch, unch, unch dance. Uh, unch, and I like I like the dancing part, but I also like being able to talk to people and interact with people, especially when you get people together from different facets of the community that we don't necessarily get to see as often. True. And so I felt like this was a bit of the hellfire with more performance, better spaced out, and a bit more interactive amongst people. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And yeah. and I think, yeah, and everybody definitely made an effort in, in dressing up and going out and looking nice. And it was just, yeah, it was really amazing. A lot of fun. Yeah. Um, also, just as a side note, there was something, there was a really nice moment at, at the fetish ball when the friends of ours came in and like without even like just without even really a hello he just came up and just like completely patched me and it was like i was sort of melted into him a bit <laughs> i have a crush on both of them yeah. like i crushed so hard on both of them uh and like he just pushed everything out of the way and just made out with me for a few minutes uh it was great yeah um, yes and like both of them looked fucking stunning oh I, amazing I'm yeah in lust mm-hmm. and they're nice people which ugh. <laughs> what are the odds Really odds? hot, really sexy, really nice people. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with this. Inconceivable. I know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm game for this. <laughs> uh, all right, so what's next? What do you want to talk about? Um, I know well, you've got a whole list over there. I do. I think it's just a matter of, of which direction do we want to go. Okay. So, do we have, to, like, it's a choose your own adventure? Are you going to give me, like, a choice and then the people okay. at home are going to be like, no, choose the other one. Yeah. And I'm going to go with what I want to do. So we can go with, like, sexy play at home with others with a particular Ooh. toy we can oh, go yeah, yeah. with sexy play at home with a new bed oh, or we can go her. with sexy play at the club recently wow hmm 
It's like a choose your own adventure, and I, I feel know. like we should do a call out. Like everybody at home, shout out. What do you want us to do? <laughs> a sexy play at home with friends. B sexy play at home by ourselves on our new bed. Or C, do you want us to do sexy play at the club? Mm-hmm. Or you know, the D, which is also sexy play at home, which we didn't even talk about. Mm. Um, uh, well, while they're shouting that out and making their choice, let's take a brief commercial break. <laughs> Suckers. <laughs> Join us on The Wet Coast, a podcast about sexuality and ethical non-monogamy of every variety. We talk polyamory and swinging, monogamish and open relationships, from dirty, dirty sex to heartbreak and everything in between. We share our personal experiences and philosophy, observations and theories, what works for us and where we fucked it right up. This isn't your average couple's explanabrag podcast, though we definitely do a little of that. We share our adventures in open with a unique, funny, feminist, and Canadian approach. Come get wet with us on the wet coast. Welcome back. So we listen to your screams. We listen to your moans. We listen to all of it. And what we heard was you wanted to hear about our sexy play at home with our with a toy and some friends. Yeah, that's what we heard. So yeah. uh, I don't remember if that was A, B, C. I know it wasn't D, but it doesn't matter. Uh, that's what we heard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we had a friend that we actually met. We're talking about the people that we met at Desire. Yeah, we met him at Desire, and he went. His is on. He's in the middle of this like worldwide tour, and he came to Australia for a little while. Mm-hmm. And so last weekend. It's all running together now. Yes. I believe it was last weekend. It was last weekend. So he, not this past weekend for you folks. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It was a few weekends ago for (laughs) y'all. So he stopped, you know, he was with a a partner of his who Mm -hmm. she's Australian. Mm -hmm. They met in in Sydney, greater Sydney area and drove around whatever vacation. Doesn't matter. So he will be known as Ryder. Mm -hmm. She will be known as the sub. Okay. Like, I don't think there's any better way to describe her. <laughs> um, and not like, like foot long. <laughs> Six inch? Six inch. <laughs> she's, yeah. Anyway, she's adorable. Ryder and the sub, we met them in, at Manly and mm-hmm. had some beers. Uh, Four Pines Brewery. If you don't know Four Pines, fucking find it. It's amazing. Uh, and had lovely conversation with them. And we've been chatting with him and her a little bit over mm-hmm. Facebook Messenger for a while in preparation for him coming. And so we we met them at, at Four Pines, had some drinks, had some good conversation, wandered around Manly Beach, showed him Manly Beach. Uh, and then, yeah, he was like, look, you know, she has had an experience with a neon wand, but it wasn't a good experience. Mm-hmm. And I know you guys have a neon wand. I would like us to give her a good experience with a neon wand. Right. And what did we say? But of course. Struth. <laughs> <laughs> um so we were like, absolutely. So they came over to our place yeah. and Angela got out this. Uh, so as a side note, our neon wand is in this briefcase that looks like it belongs in Mission Impossible. <laughs> like, it's this big silver textured briefcase. It's like the cut, the foam is custom cut out by Angela because she is such the beautiful type one personality. It all has to be neatly packed away and it has to be protected and not just like from ourselves and when we're storing it here, but if we take it places, it needs to, you know, be able to travel. And so, yes, it's it's, pretty it's in a very travelable case. It is in a very travelable case. Um, and protective. I absolutely love it. It's great. But it does look like it. it's like <laughs> this, this sex toy will self-destruct. <laughs> <laughs> it's also let me open up my kit here. Yeah, it very much is. It, I mean, yeah. it's great because it sort of adds to that. That is sensuality to it. The especially case itself you, is textured and looks pretty. Well, and especially if you don't let the person see what's inside of it. So if you open it up so that the lid is towards them, then it's a bit of a mystery as to what's what's in there. What and the what's, fuck's going to yeah. happen? Even if you know it's a wand, you don't know what utensils are there, what attachments. Yeah. And, yeah. So we broke it out. We got it plugged in mm-hmm. and we started toying around with her. Yes. Starting on a very low setting, et cetera, et cetera. And, and it I, was with one of the the wider attachments, so it kind yeah, of disperses the... the flat tongue yeah. attachment. attachment. Yeah. Um, what's funny is that she went from clothes to, like, I blinked twice and she was basically in her panties. <laughs> I was like, wait, what just happened here? <laughs> like, like, she went from, 
I don't know if I really like this. To, okay, do me. <laughs> yeah, she, we started out at a very low setting. Because not really knowing her limits and what she's been subjected to before, right. that kind of thing. And, and yeah, not knowing anything. We start off very low. And quickly it was like, more, 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 more. <laughs> Is that thing even on? <laughs> Uh, wait, she's Australian. Is that thing even on, mate? Uh, so, yeah, she was sitting on our couch in her panties. It was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, the three of us were clothed, which I didn't realize I liked this. But this whole – I know it's a whole fetish, the clothed females, naked males. Yes. Uh, CFNM, if mm-hmm. you've ever seen this. There was something really – alluring about her being nearly naked and us being all clothed. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that would affect me the way it did, but Interesting. It, I actually liked that. Yeah. Like there's such a there's something about that that I think just sort of it's a, it's a it's a power thing, I guess. And I'm not used to being in any kind of power. <laughs> so, you know, it's the little things. It's the little yeah. things. Yeah, so we we played with the standard attachments for a while yes. and then uh a towel came out. You know, because... Just in case. Just in case. You never know. Uh, (laughs) And we put that towel under her and then had her sit on one of the attachments, which is a sort of a bare metal um, I forget what it's called, but yeah, it's just a flat metal rectangle. So basically you attach that to your skin and then you become the conductive utensil, basically. and that's the way we've always always played with mm-hmm. it. Like with an ace bandage, you bandage it to your mm-hmm. arm, and then your arm is the is the electric, yeah. whatever. But, but this, having her sit on it, yeah. making her the her whole body then became, yeah. which so that was the reverse. So instead of whoever's in charge of the wand becoming the utensil, she becomes the utensil, and then whoever's I'm going to say, quote unquote, in charge of the wand, the dom, is then the one that decides what part of her and how. So you're still in control and you're still kind of driving the situation. But it's a matter of, is the signal passed from her to you or you to her? And and there's a difference there. Yeah. But still, the, yeah. the tingle is... It's still there. It's still there. Yeah. No matter who's yeah, yeah. doming or who's subbing, mm-hmm. both of you are going to get a bit of tingle unless you're grounded. Yeah. So we ended up getting like... In, in in true fetish play fashion, most of our kitchen utensils were out in the living room. <laughs> uh, we had a couple of forks. There was a butter knife, a couple of spoons, a spatula. a spatula. Um, and I pulled out at one point. I pulled out the um, the little head scratcher thing. The orgasmatron. Yeah. I think is actually what its actual is it? name is. I think okay. its actual name is orgasmatron. Yeah. So the little metal head scratcher thing. Um. So yeah, I pulled that out and was like scratching her head with it. And... So yeah. So she's feeling. But we did this... find that with that alone, we had to jack the we yes. had to jack it way up because otherwise she didn't really feel it. Yeah. So. But once you jacked it up, I think she had an orgasm nearly just from that. Mm. She was on the verge. Mm. Um, she well, look, she enjoyed it. The sounds yeah. that were yeah. emanating from her were <laughs> pleasurable sounds, uh, which was hilarious. And I was like, "Whoa, um, yeah!" The whole experience. It was, was fun because it was kind of the three of us playing with her and toying with her in different ways, and and touching her. You know, of course, you've got you've got nipple play. You've got just even just rubbing your hands along her thighs, along her body, around her neck. You know, just that kind of thing. Like, and it was, and and playing with the signal and and turning it up, turning it down. Again, sometimes she wouldn't see that, so she wouldn't know if yeah. it was going to be strong or not strong. And at the same time, sometimes Ryder would be touching her and playing with her, and then we would then do something to him, <laughs> yeah. and that was fun. So <laughs> a few times where yeah. she would grab somebody's hand, and then you would touch Ryder, and the uh-huh. shock would go through you. Yeah. Uh, it was, yeah, it was pretty funny. In fact, let me rephrase that. It was fucking hilarious <laughs> because then we all started getting a bit jumpy. Like, uh-huh. who's going to touch me? And I don't, I don't trust you. And I know at one point you went to touch his ear and he was like, what, what are you doing? And you're like, I'm not even like, I'm just fucking with you now. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was such an interesting experience. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I was. I think I was surprised at how much fun that ended up being because I knew. I mean, I like playing with that thing. I don't necessarily like being the toucher. I like uh-huh. being the touchy. Yeah. I don't like my fingers. I don't like that feeling of tingly, uh, the tingly numbness in my fingers. I don't mm-hmm. like that. And honestly, I think it goes back to me being type one diabetic. And I'm that's a feeling, that's a bad thing. That's a feeling yeah. that numbness and tingly is a bad thing. Yeah. So like you've you've been I've been taught that. But I do like the feeling on like my 
my my ass and my back and mm-hmm. my testicles and that kind of stuff. But it was just interesting to do that to her, and then like dragging because a fork across her. I don't think you've ever really been the the dumb or the giver with the wand, have you? No, no. Yeah. Uh, I did learn though that like. The mind fuck. I'm really. The more we play around <laughs> mm-hmm. with me as a dom, the more mind fucky I can get. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm really enjoying that. I'm not as good at, at being the like physical dom. Yeah. yeah. But I do like just like messing with people's heads. <laughs> this is what I'm gonna do, and then yeah. you do something different. And just, that's fun. I'm starting to like that. <laughs> <sighs> anyway. So yeah, she that was a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed it. Was it was fun. Uh, she was very sweet in our in this demure kind of thank you. Every time you hurt her, she thanked you, which mm-hmm. I'm not used to that. I think because of yours and my relationship. Mm-hmm. Every time you hurt me, I'm more mouth off and be sarcastic. Uh, yeah. So mm-hmm. there you go. It was good. Yeah. It was fun. It really was. I think we were all entertained. Yes, definitely. And it was nice to pull the wand out again because it's been probably a month or more since we pulled it out. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited now, though, because yeah. I'm thinking we, you know, we can put the gentleman on it. Oh, yeah. You know, let, let him sit on it and oh, then yeah. do all the torturous things to him now. So uh-huh. now that we know that, because honestly, I think we probably knew you could do that. It's yeah, just yeah. you don't do that because you don't think about it. Mm. Now we know. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Ryder. <laughs> so do we want to go on with that night? Yeah, sure. We ended up at the club. Shocker. You know, when you mm-hmm. have something amazing, what do you do? Yeah. You share it. Yeah, so we took them to our secret spot. And, uh, yeah, it was a fun evening. So we got there pretty early on. I think it was maybe 8, 45, 9 o'clock, something like that. Yeah. So it was pretty early on, but there were already people there. So we were kind of chatting with some folks up front. And uh, they had made it very clear that they wanted to play with us. And I mean, totally happy with that. That's fine. And side uh, note, I really like it when people make it very clear. <laughs> Cause sometimes you're like, do they want to play with yeah, us? Like, yeah. Which we, we actually had that this weekend at the mm-hmm. club, which we'll talk about at some future podcast. But you know, if you're not clear, yeah, that can end up with problems. And I'm not really good at going, hey, do you want to play with me? Mm. But I am very good at going, hey, I want to play with you. So I'm not going to ask you a question, but I need you to tell me what you want. Yeah. But at the same time, if you're willing to say, hey, I want to play with you, you want someone to say the same thing to you. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. But I don't want to ask the question. Right. Right. But yeah, it's it's good to take the ambiguity out of it. And mm. so, yeah, they made it very clear that they wanted to play with us and we were happy for that. And yes. so it wasn't very long. I mean, we were downstairs chatting with some folks for a short time. And then we basically, I think they were like, we're going to go dress down and go upstairs. <laughs> well, it's well, it's so. kind of funny because this couple that we were talking to, I was like, I've really enjoyed the conversation. Yeah. And they were like, oh, yeah, we're going to go dress down and go upstairs. Because, I mean, arguably for, in their defense, they had a very early flight. Like, That's I true. think their alarm was going off at like five in the morning. So they wanted to leave by midnight. Right. So we were having this really lovely conversation yeah, with this like couple. Yeah, because like my 10, 1030 alarm clock didn't go it off It didn't yet. even have time to go <laughs> no. off. <laughs> And because we were chatting with this couple and they were like, oh, yeah, we're going to go uh, Ryder and, and the sub. We're like, we're going to go dress down. Mm. And they left. And both of us kind of looked at the other couple and were like, oh, that's our cue. <laughs> like, and I felt like a <laughs> dick. Um, arguably, we are going to see them here soon because mm-hmm. uh, chatting with the couple, our paths are going to cross in the coming future. So it was like, all right, well, let's put this conversation on hold. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, not sorry. A slightly <laughs> awkward moment, but not too bad. Yeah. yeah. So we went and smoke bombed and dressed down and then mm-hmm. met them upstairs in the petite room. Yes. Which I got to be honest, that was exactly sort of what I wanted. I didn't want to like, deal with other people. Uh, I think the petite room was a good choice for that. Time. I wouldn't have been comfortable doing what I did. Yeah. In and a big group. Now everybody at home is going, what did Bradford do? We're going to wait till next week. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's looking at the time. They're like, it's not been an it's hour been, yet. It's, it's been 40 minutes. <laughs> what? <laughs> God, I'm such a dick. See, the mind fuck. You've been mind fucked. Uh, next thing, I'm going to start calling myself Chris Angel. Mind fuck. Mind freak. Whatever. So, we... We got I, feel, I the, feel like you need to get that right, though. What? The mind I, fuck, mind freak. It's, it's the same. Right. 
this. Uh, look, we're not going to talk about Chris Angel. I hate that guy. You brought him up. I know. It drives me crazy. So we um, we get up to the petite room, and think immediately, which I I love this. Ryder is one of those guys that flirts with everyone mm-hmm. like i saw him flirt with a street sign for like a good 45 <laughs> seconds he was like so should i yield or should i stop <laughs> uh like he's one of those guys that's just who he is which i find extremely endearing um and very funny but he gets up in, in the room we do the we do that quick that quick okay Let's have the conversation of testing and blah, 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 yeah. blah safety protocols, etc. And after the safety protocols, he looked at me and goes, I just want you to know, I flirt with everybody, but I am straight. <laughs> like, good to know. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure we already knew that. I was like, I did, I'm pretty yeah. sure I did know that from Desire. Yeah. But it was nice to have that, yes. that reminder. Because I can always change as Yeah, well, like, you so. never know. Yeah, yeah, sure. I could be straight today and, and, and yeah. buy tomorrow for play. Once you're by, you're always by. Just saying that. Uh, don't buy a race. So, oh, now I'm looking at the pictures again, and they're like... Do we need to turn off the furry porn well, stuff? it's like two furry guys standing at a urinal. Uh-huh. So that's really weird, but I uh-huh. find it really Focus. attractive. Uh, so we start to play. People at home. I can hear <laughs> Naughty right now going, Focus, Bradford! I want to hear the same thing. Sorry! <laughs> <laughs> Which you'll find out next week. <laughs> just doing it just to fuck with one listener. <laughs> So we start playing, and sh- the sub mm-hmm. and I, I'll let you tell your side of it here in a moment, but the sub and I started immediately out subbing one another, trying to see who could be subbier. <laughs> you almost Who's the subbiest of the you, subs? You almost spit your wine on your <laughs> microphone. <laughs> That's why you don't drink when I. <laughs> um, because I know you've had these conversations before where you're playing with a Dom, mm. and it's like, who can out Dom one another? Trying to out sub one another is a lot more different because at one point you end up with two slugs just sort of laying there going, you want to pour salt on me? <laughs> I mean, that's basically how it ends up being. Uh-huh. But somewhere in that. Is it, is it one of those like, so like, if you really want to touch me, you can. Well, if you really want me to touch you, I will. Well, if you really want to. and <laughs> It's not even like that. It's like there's this. It's really, it's a really interesting power pull, which I'm starting to really like of, which I used to not like, of that who can be subbier. So you make out for a little while and then you start, I start to pull back a little, Mm -hmm. like in a, you can do what you want with me, hurt me kind of thing. But when the other person sort of does that as well, or like for me, if we're making out and I'm trying to show my submissive side to you, I will start to nuzzle your, yes. your neck. Like that, You're like we yeah. make out and then I lean back, pull away, and then I instantly go in and I submissively, it's very, I mean, it's animalistic, but it's just who I am. Submissively start nuzzling your neck. Well, then she starts doing that. Mm-hmm. And it's like, we're going back and forth. And then suddenly it's like, we start out at f- both of us at fives. And then I'm like a four. And then she's <laughs> like a three. And then I'm like a two and a half. And then like, but at one point we got to, I got to a point where I was like, no, I am more dumb yeah and then i just started being a lot more aggressive with her uh so i'll I'll take a step back from that and let you tell your side of how you and Ryder started so at the beginning so it's interesting because you say that about when i play with other doms and to me sexy play is different than dom sub play Okay. And so when I play with another dom, I'm not thinking about it as to who's going to out dom, who's going to whatever. Like that's that's not a thing for me. It's a matter of let's play and let's be respectful and just have a good time and what works for you, what doesn't work for you, what works for me, etc. It's it's the same things that happens in another play situation with someone who like you for instance is it's just feeling out what is it that you want at the moment what is it that you need at the moment what can i give you and what do i want and how do we make all of this work together is there no control back and forth though cuz i've seen you with people that you can tell that they're trying to be in control but they're not oh, this sounds bad to say it but they're not doing it right so you take control 
so in that, I would say that, that the times that I can think of like that that you're referring to is if they're, if the person is more directive, but directive does not equal Dom to me. To me, directive is someone telling me to do something in a certain tone of voice, expecting me to do it no matter what. And that's not respectful to me okay. unless we have an established relationship to where that's okay, which we don't because, yeah, they just don't have that. Um, not, you know, with somebody above me telling me it's okay. I was going to say, okay. though, I can only think um, of a couple of people that might fall into that category yeah, for you. Yeah, but it's, but if someone's directive, and I will say that if someone is directive, for me, that immediately puts my hackles up. Like I put a wall up and I'm just, and, and it's not a, conscious thing it just happens innately as to just no you're not going to tell me what to do and it's a certain tone of voice it just is but for me it's that's that's different than being dom though because dom is and i guess it's maybe because i think of it as feeding off of what the other person needs and providing that need for them and so it's it's a different more kind of a symbiosis of, kind of yeah thing. so it's more of i would say maybe it's and i don't know necessarily all the correct nuances and, and terminologies and whatnot but i would see it as more of the difference between a true dom sub relationship so maybe someone who's like truly submissive most of the time or all of the time to their dom versus like a service top kind of thing okay and yeah i, I don't know to me i just there's a, a slight difference there and maybe that's not the best way to describe it i don't know um so yeah, when I'm playing with someone who is dominant, it, I don't see it necessarily as a power struggle. It's not a who's going to outdom, who's going to control this situation, because that can also change as play goes on and, and as things happen is, you know, we all want to be pleased and we want to please our play partners, I would assume. And and what that looks like can change and, and who needs what at, at any given moment might be different. Um, so yeah, when we started playing... Uh, I will say that he started off more directive because he was immediately, he, what was it that he said? He, I think he said, kiss me. Yeah, or he looked like at you that. at one point and said, kiss. That, I will say that's something that struck in my mind because the four of us are sitting there yeah. and he looked at you and goes, kiss me. And I went, oh, buddy, that is not going to work. <laughs> and you looked at me and then looked at him and went, no. <laughs> yeah, because it wasn't, he didn't say it in a, it in was, a seductive, in a... It was in a an, very directive. Yeah, it wasn't in like in an enticing, like kind of alluring, kind of like pull you in kind of way. It was just a do this and yeah. I, I was sitting there going, oh, this is going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> so I think for me, that's what I meant when I was in this kind of dominant okay, power play. Okay. Like at the second, I know you, the second somebody gives you a directive... You will you will move the earth to not do what they like. Mm -hmm. Even when you and I are playing, and I'll be like, "Suck my cock," and you'll be like, "Oh, is that what you want?" And I'm like, "Oh God!" <laughs> like, "Yes, please." <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. if we're and yeah. it's it's interesting because it's not something that I necessarily do super consciously. It's just it's just who you it are. just is yeah. yeah. And but yeah, he said that, and I was just like. <laughs> It was, and it was the tone of voice, honestly, with more than anything. It's, it's not the words because you can say the words in an alluring, seductive, mm. like kind of pull someone in kind of way. Kiss me. Yeah. But it's, but it was just a, it was, and I know it's because of the relationship that he has with right. the sub. And so I'm sure that's what he's used to. That's how he's used to interacting with people. But we don't, I, I don't interact like that. And, <laughs> and so yeah, it was just like, no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> I think the only way it could have been better if you looked at me and went, eh, try again. <laughs> Which, <laughs> from, from now on, that's how I want you to react when somebody mm -hmm. does something. Eh, no, try again. <laughs> oh, my yeah. God. Uh, but it, so that was at the very beginning. And, and I don't remember entirely if there was anything said or done action wise or whatnot in between, but basically it ended up with me kind of grabbing underneath his chin. And pulling him towards me, and then we did kiss. Yes. And what I thought was funny about that was I saw that as a um, an equal thing. You know, to me that was pretty equal. And sub the sub looks over and, and looks to you, and she says, "So who won?" <laughs> and I'm like, it's not about who wins. It's like, do we both get something that we enjoy? It's not. It to me, sexy play is not winning or losing. Sexy play is sexy play look I'm with her you won <laughs> sorry Ryder sorry buddy um, but yeah you won uh, but I agree with her though there it is I look I, I hear what you're saying but there is 
always, let me rephrase this. I was going to say there's always a winner, but somebody always comes out on top. <laughs> See what well I did done. there? Thanks. Well done. Thanks. Uh, yeah. But realistically, there is. There's always a balance of, yeah. of power. And when she said that, I knew exactly what she meant. Mm. And I also knew that I've never seen you lose one of those kind of power struggle things. It's kind of like you're like Emperor Palpatine, but sexy with a lot <laughs> less wrinkles. Uh, same amount of lightning, a lot less wrinkles. <laughs> one day I'll have the wrinkles. <laughs> Just wait. I'll be your Emperor Palpatine. Oh my God, every every <laughs> every square inch of you is going to be a vagina. Then <laughs> I will fuck You'll every have part of you. So many places to fuck. I will. It's going to be great. <laughs> uh, it's, like so, yeah. It, it's all. It's always a power play. It's always a power play. Somebody always wins. Yeah. Well, I will say that after, that, and I don't mean that in a negative way. Yeah. I want to make that very clear. This is. It's not a. There's no like. I can't think of a better battle to lose. <laughs> <laughs> the sexy battle. You're happy either way. Yeah. yeah. And after that, I will say that we kind of settled into a, a, a rhythm. A rhythm. Yeah. And it was, yeah. you know, there, there was, there was play. And, and I don't know from there on, I can't really say like, if you're looking at control, who was in control, who was directing things? I don't know. It just kind of happened. Yeah. And that's, that's what I like is when, More when the, organic, yeah, play. when the play just happens and it's a push pull, you know, sometimes you may get what you want. Sometimes I get what I want. You know, if you're like, well, I want you like this or move over here, that can be fine. But again, it's, it's how you say it and how you direct it. And, and there's ways to do it and, and then ways that, that don't necessarily work with me. But again, that's learning your partner. And, and the first time you play with somebody, you're you're kind of feeling these things out yeah. and you're learning and you're you're getting there and and we definitely got there in the end it was great but this was you know the first time that we've played with them and and so you know you were doing your thing with her which we'll get back to but yeah with him we continued on playing and it was great it was and i will say that there was a push pull you know and we both had a lot of fun at least i had a lot of fun he seemed to have a lot of fun but it it was just that starting off it was like all right we need to set the tone here because i'm not sub like her and yeah. and it was again it wasn't necessarily conscious it was just just something in me it just happens and but i i think he kind of got that and and realized it is interesting our play styles because you and i mean that i don't mean this 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 might sound like i'm i'm no cutting you but i don't you are very much like you said you're it's a push pull mm. it's a i want to give you what you need while you give me what i need Whereas yeah. I feel like I'm a lot more chameleon that I sort of blend into whatever play style. Like, Your partner has. Yeah. Yeah. Like whatever. It is much more of a I'm going to please you to please you. Mm. Like my pleasure is secondary. And I don't think there's a right or wrong mm. between the two of us. But I'm very much a I will adapt my play style to your play style and then I'll 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 find my enjoyment along the way. Yeah. Which is what we did what I did with her. Um because I am not I mean, I think everybody knows I am not dominant. I've said it a billion zillion times. But you've discovered your switch side. And I expressed that switch side <laughs> you wholeheartedly did. You with did. her in that once we were kissing a bit, like I said, I was like, I hey, look, we're not gonna get anywhere if both of us are like if both of us if you're both try subby, to out yeah. each other, we're like I said, we're going to be two slugs laying on the floor asking somebody to assault us. I like that you've moved from the bed to the floor now. <laughs> well, it's funny because she was on the floor at the time. <laughs> but she ended up kneeling in front of me and I was sitting on the end of the bed and kissing her. And it hit me that I like I found this piece inside of me that I was unfamiliar with. And so with that mind fuck sort of thing, I grabbed her by the back of her, the hair <laughs> at the back of her head, yeah. pulled her head back and then just whispered in my, in her ear. And I was like, I'm going to hurt you very badly, but I promise not to break you. Now, again, side note, listeners, we do know that this is something that she's into. Oh, God, yeah. We've so, already had these conversations. Yeah, so we'd already learned that yeah. this was something that sh that really did it for her. Yeah, so. and, like, she melted a little. And then it got to be that thing where I was like, okay, what would I want to hear? Yeah. And I think I've said this a, a couple of times. I'm going to say it, like, like, 
in order to be a good dom, you have to be a good sub. You have to understand what is it that revs that engine. Mm-hmm. And I think switches are the best. I'm just saying it right now. I've had top tops and I've had switch tops. I think it, you've got to understand what that switch needs to hear or what that bottom needs to mm-hmm. hear. Uh, and I said, I, I said a couple of things to her and I would whisper in her ear and just like, and every time, I don't even remember what some of it was, but every time she was just like, Oof. and <laughs> at the end she was like, you were saying exactly what I needed to hear. And it was because that's what I would want yeah. to hear. But yeah, it was one of those like very much kind of use me. She was a use me kind of lady mm-hmm. and which is hard for me to completely objectify somebody, but I found out how to do it. And she was, yeah, it was great. It was, it was one of those, like, just, I, I got a little physical with her. I don't, I don't like to hit in the face, so I didn't mm-hmm. hit her in the face. But, uh, I asked her at one point, I was like, can I, can I smack your tits? And she was like, yes. And I was like, oh, thank God. Cause I've been wanting to, I like, sound random and bizarre and probably horrific, but I've wanted to spank some tits for a while. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you're not like really into it. You you don't mind it, but you're not like, really into it. She was really into mm-hmm. it. So I was wailing on her a little. Uh, that was great. And then the, you know, doggy style and again, wailing on her. Unfortunately, I've had a shoulder injury. So my dominant hand did not have the strength it really needed. Uh, but, you know, I'm working on with my left hand, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get it stronger. Work on the ambidextrousness. Work, I'm trying to be amphibious. It ended up working out really well for me. I was yeah. really enjoying it. Like, I'm always afraid. I'm I'm always conscious and, and afraid of not maintaining an erection. Mm-hmm. And especially when I'm sort of branching out and doing something that I'm not normally comfortable with, it's even worse. Because, you know, like, you, this right. is not, I'm not really yeah. comfortable with this. But I had no issues at all. Like, this, it was, it was there and it was staying. And, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. It's great and ended up with a nice body shot on her and uh yeah that was really hot and then she was like may i clean you up i'm like yes <laughs> <laughs> which i don't care who you are it unless it's not your thing which i totally respect but i love it when a woman's like i want to i want to clean you up after you've come yeah yeah and there's like there's something great about that it was like oh woof, yes go ahead do it <laughs> yeah but it was good. It was a great experience. Oof. Yeah, it was fun. It was really good. Yeah. And it was fun to watch you with her because you could see that you were really kind of getting into it. It was weird. Yeah. It was weird for me, but it was very enjoyable. Mm. Like, it was great. And then watching you guys, and then he and I sort of tag-teamed her for a little yeah. while. And it was, yeah. Uh, one of the things that they had never done was the Eiffel Tower. Oh, yes. I or London about Bridge. Yeah. I don't remember which one it is. It's basically where uh, I think I was fucking her, and he she was going down on him. And then he and I grasped hands uh-huh. over her, which was just this funny. I mean, it was more for jokes than for anything else, but everybody enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We were some, uh, we were some British Europe. Some bridge thing. something. We were some yeah. bridge tower thing. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so that was good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any uh, final thoughts? We, I mean, the, the the long and short of it is we wrapped up there. Yeah. They smoke bombed because they had to get uh, mm-hmm. back to their Airbnb so that they could leave in the next morning. I don't remember. We did some, we chatted with people. So yeah, so we hung around for a little bit longer and. We didn't play again as I remember. No, admittedly, we were kind of thinking about a round two, but then we were just having so much fun talking to people. And so we just did that for a while. And then finally we were like, all right, let's, let's just go home. And so we didn't close. We stayed there. I think we left probably one thirty, two o'clock, something like that. But yeah, we didn't, we didn't end up playing again, but it was just because we were having so much fun talking to people and yeah, Yeah, didn't make it back upstairs. It was a good night. Yeah. It was really fun. Yeah. Uh, That was, that was, that was that, that was selection number Mm-hmm. A or B? I don't know. I think it was A. Pretty a. sure it was A. A. A and C. <laughs> okay. Yeah. See? Yeah. We got two of the, like, choose your own adventure things. Ah. Yeah. Wasn't that like a movie channel or something in the States? Choose your own adventure? Was that AMC? A and C? Oh, AMC is, yeah, American Movie uh, Classics. Okay, that was it. But choose okay. your own adventure was books. Well, I know that. Oh. Yes, yes. I'm like, Bandersnatch. I know. I read those ones. I'd like to, I, I, I still want to come up with a porn that's a Bandersnatch porn. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so any other final comments on this uh, no. this topic? I think we covered pretty matter? well, yeah. Yeah. 
tell us your stories. We want to hear them. Uh, send us your urban legends. You can message us at theatomsoflove at gmail.com. You can send us all your furry porn at By the By Podcast on Facebook, on uh, Twitter, on Instagram. There's lots of messages out there, and we definitely appreciate all of them. We're trying to get to all of them. Like, we've had some lovely messages. If you If you write more than hi, sexy, or <laughs> show me your bubs... Uh-huh. Uh, we we do respond to it. It just takes us time because we're fucking slow and life and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, send us your messages. Support us on Patreon, www.patreon.com slash by the by podcast. Also, go to Geeky Sex Toys. Buy yourself some Geeky Sex Toys and use the coupon code by the by. And you will get 5% off. I mean, everybody likes a discount code. Mm-hmm. And they ship worldwide. So wherever you's living, wherever you're hearing this from, you can get yourself a paddle that looks like a TARDIS to a dildo that looks like the Master Sword to all the Pokemon stuff you could want. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's, it's great. We will be bringing more geeky sex toys to yes. Desire this year. And we'll be giving them away because we love our friends at Geeky Sex Toys and they love mm-hmm. us too. So thank you very much. Anything else you want to say, babe? No. Cool. Yeah, thanks for listening. Talk at you later. Yeah. Peace out. Hi, this is Emily, co-host of the Multiamory Podcast. We offer new ideas and advice for multiple forms of love, everything from conscious monogamy to ethical polyamory and radical relationship anarchy. And you're listening to a Swingset Network podcast. Find us and much more at swingset.fm.